So we have uh, Professor Frank von Hippel in the plane today. Now, Frank, you're a physicist, but you've spent a career uh, both working as a professor of public policy and working inside and outside government on nuclear arms control and other nuclear-related issues. And today we're going to uh, fly around New Jersey and talk about some of your work. How does that sound? Sounds good. Princeton Traffic, Skyhawk 493, Romeo Mike is departing runway 28. You and I in a little toy shop Buy a bag of balloons with the money we've got Set them free at the break of dawn To one by one they so, so now we are flying over Princeton University campus Where you taught right, all these years From 84 to 2013 a lot of people are looking at what's going on today between the United States and Russia and calling it a new Cold War. When we had the initial Cold War, there was a lot of effort on the part of scientists like you to get both the U.S. side and the Soviet side to reduce the number of nuclear weapons um, and take other steps uh, necessary to avoid a all-out nuclear war. I mean, we did have a nuclear arms race going on. He both, at that point, both sides had demonized to the other to the point where they were imagining the other was willing to have the nuclear first strike. Both sides really were developing weapons for a first strike. We're edging toward a, uh, a situation like that again. You actually went to the Soviet Union about 40 times, mostly during the 80s. And, and what were you doing there? Well, basically what had happened was in 1983, when uh, after... President Reagan announced his Star Wars program, and at the time I was chairman of the Federation of American Scientists, which you, you currently the president of. We went over, and we met with this group, and we started brainstorming with them. There was a group of academicians uh, from the Soviet Academy. And then two years later, uh, when we uh, when Gorbachev took over, we learned that they, these were a group which was advising Gorbachev. Oh, wow. So, so the scientists that you were talking to ended up being influential mem mem uh, advisors to Gorbachev. Yeah, yeah, they were. They were, and in fact, they were his, in, a, in effect, his, his arms control advisors. And he took a number of amazing initiatives, uh, which you know, I give him most of the credit of, of the uh, for the end of the arms race. Uh, yeah. Is the New Jersey coastline amazing? Oh. Which is subject to another problem, climate change. Right. Doesn't look like much height above sea level, does it? No, it really doesn't. Right. Right. Now, now, do you think we should just fly to Europe? Go to Europe? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Should we, should, we, should we pull a Charles Lindbergh and just take a single engine across the ocean? Uh, how much gas have you got? <laughs> I think um, we'll get about a tenth of the way. <laughs> well, maybe we better get some more, a bigger gas tank. <laughs> you, you did a lot of work on nuclear power as well. Yes, that's right. Uh, I, I started with reactor safety. I, you know, whenever there was a major reactor accident, I got pulled in back into that journal. So, so do you uh, do you think nuclear it should be part of the solution to climate change? It, it could be if it was done right. You know, the question is, can you bring it back to life again? It, since, since Chernobyl, the uh, the global nuclear capacity has not increased. Well, elect other sources of electrical supply have about doubled, and therefore the the percentage of uh, of uh, electricity from nuclear power globally has dropped to uh, about eleven percent. And that's just because it's so expensive. Well, it's, it's building it, a reactor is ten it, it, billion dollars, right? It, it's it's become expensive because uh, it, because of safety uh, to build a nuclear power plant. Uh, and other things have gotten cheaper. Uh, wind, uh, renewables, natural gas because of fracking. And, and so, uh, uh, and, and the capital cost of, of nuclear power plants have, have probably quadrupled. I don't really know where I am. I was hoping you could guide us. <laughs> I think we're going, uh, it looks to me like the Garden State Parkway down below us. So are we going the right way? Yeah, I think we're doing all right, okay. I mean, in, in, in general. You know. okay, I'm counting on you to figure out uh, okay. where the airport is. All right, I, I, I ought to be able to do it before we run out of gas. How much gas do we have left? Uh, well, um, did you not check the gas before we departed? <laughs> oh, is that my job? 
Didn't we talk about that? I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> I remember in, when I started working on the Hill in 2008, there was a big interest in the nuclear renaissance. And the nuclear industry was basically saying, if you give us you know, tax breaks and loan guarantees, we're going to build lots of reactors. And I remember you were saying, well, be careful, because we heard this story back in the 70s. And we started building lots of reactors, and hardly any of them, or, or a lot of them, didn't get finished because they're so expensive, they're not profitable. Even though the, during the Obama administration, the industry only embarked on, I think, just two new reactors in South Carolina and Georgia, even those ones are in trouble. There are two of them, there are four, and uh, the ones in... Uh in Georgia have, have been abandoned, I believe, and the ones in South Carolina are really struggling. What is your advice to scientists today? Well, I, I mean, at first I would say, uh, you know, educate your, yourselves uh, so that you, know, you, you uh, can explain these issues to, to Congress people, uh, especially to Congress today, because Congress was quite educated on these issues in the 80s. Uh, but now no longer, and then and then hit you up with citizens groups who are concerned about these issues, and they'll do the work of providing access to you, helping you get access to actually deliver your message, and and you can you can work with them, help help them educate themselves, help educate them, and there's a real synergism, and we've been doing that. Our group has been doing that with a uh, uh, a local citizens group in Princeton for 40 years and it really and we have really developed real relationships with our congress people there she is we found the runway frank <laughs> smiling through just like you always do till the blue skies drive the dark clouds Far away.